Welcome to Open Legacy. This video will demonstrate how to generate two services from Oracle Stored Procedures and Queries using automation. Although both of the generated services will be Java Spring Boot applications, one of them will be low code, while the other will be full code. We'll point out the differences between them. The first service, low code, will deal with a banking system and will expose CRUD operations for banking accounts. The second service, full code, will deal with an insurance system on the other hand and will expose CRUD operations for insurance policies. Both services will be generated using automation scripts that invoke the Open Legacy CLI. The Open Legacy Command Line Interface, or CLI, is used to run automation scripts that create and push modules to the Open Legacy Hub. This type of automation can be very useful in a CI-CD environment. We begin with the first scenario, an Oracle-based banking accounts backend and the generation of a low-code application. The script begins by cleaning up the environment and deleting any existing records. This housekeeping step is a best practice in automation scripts. We delete the current version of the project in the hub if one exists. If a module exists in the hub, we remove it as well. We remove the local directories that contain the module's data and the service if they exist. After the environment has been cleared, we move on to creating a module from scratch. A module is a collection of assets associated with a backend platform, a connector, and a business domain. In our case, the module is called Account Oracle, and it uses a built-in Open Legacy connector to Oracle. These connectors are an essential part of the Open Legacy magic. Open Legacy Hub provides predefined and tested connectors to many platforms or technologies, such as mainframes, databases, SAP, and more. After the module has been created, we test the connections to the backend system. Each test uses the relevant credentials for the specific backend. We indicate the following parameters for the connection, driver class name, URL, username, and the password. After the connection has been successfully tested, we add the assets to the module. An asset is an internal representation of an operation in the backend system. Here we have several CRUD operations on banking accounts. For each operation, we indicate the full path to the stored procedure or the exact SQL query we want performed. For example, we have operations that update or delete accounts and other operations that retrieve accounts according to specific criteria. After the assets are created, we test them. In some cases, we define the input parameters using a JSON file with the account information. The successful response to these tests can be shown as JSON files, as we can see here. After the tests pass successfully, we can push the account Oracle module to the Open Legacy Hub. We can then create a project in the Hub. A project, or an API project, is a collection of modules that are related in some way to the overall purpose of the project. Here, the project we will create references the single module we just created. The project defines business logic that is exposed as methods of a contract, but it is not associated with any particular software development language or technology. Once the project has been created, we proceed to generate a service based on the project we just created. The service realizes the business logic contained in the project, which is a parameter of the command, in a specific technology. One of the parameters of the command is the generator. A generator is a template that is used to indicate to the command what type of application will be generated. In our case, 
we use a generator called Spring Java REST, which is the appropriate generator to obtain a Java Spring Boot REST low-code application. Because it is a template, this generator might be overridden or altered to deal with specific business logic or usage of other components that developers might want to incorporate, for example, to deal with concerns such as security, transactions, error management, etc. Another relevant parameter is called deployment, which refers to the deployment environment for the application to be generated. In our scenario, we use OpenShift. You might use a different environment, but the principle remains the same. Once the service has been generated, we proceed to add entry points. An entry point is a mechanism Open Legacy provides to developers so they can add specific business logic in the flow of the generated methods. Now we use Gradle to run the generated application locally on port 8081. Moving to the hub interface, under the modules tab, we can now see the module account oracle. We see that all the assets we added are contained in the module. For example, get account query. For this asset, we see its input, in this case, a single field. Also, we can see its output in its hierarchical composition. In addition, we see the information of the test that was executed in the automation script, including the input and output JSON files. Continuing our exploration of the hub, we find the project account oracle microservice that was generated by the script as well. We dig into it and see its contract, which is the collection of methods that will be exposed. In our case, the contract contains one method per asset of the underlying module. Each method implements a flow with an input and an output, and an invocation to the underlying asset. In principle, we could use this graphical API designer to enrich the method with other resources, such as expressions and validations, conditions, mappings, and more. In this video, we will leave the methods the way they were generated. When the application is up and running, we can open its OpenAPI Swagger page in the browser. We see that there is an exposed method for each of the assets we added to the module previously. We test one of these methods. In this case, we use the get all customer bank accounts. This method does not receive input parameters. We click on execute and see the response of the execution, which is a list of bank accounts that was retrieved from the Oracle database. We can see the structure and code of the generated application in an IDE. So, for example, we see that it contains a class that has a Spring Boot application annotation, which means that it is the class that starts the application. Finally, we take a look at the code of our entry point Java classes. These classes are useful to run ad hoc code before or after a specific event occurs within the flow. And they are another mechanism available to developers to incorporate logic into the service. Now we move on to the second scenario. Here we will create another service, which will be a full code Java Spring Boot application with a set of Oracle stored procedures and queries from an insurance system as its backend. The initial steps are identical to the previous scenario. First, we perform a housekeeping step. Then we create a module called Policy Oracle, associated with the built-in Open Legacy Oracle connector, and we test the connection using the appropriate connection details. We add assets to the module, which are based on Oracle stored procedures and queries that represent CRUD operations for insurance policies. Then we test each asset, providing a JSON input file where needed. We push the module to the hub and generate a project based on this module. 
now we reach the step of generating a service. In this case, the generator is called Spring Java REST Full Code. As you may have guessed, the output is a Java Spring Boot application in a full code version. We'll take a look at the produced code later. We use Maven commands to build and install the application, and we run it locally on the default port 8080. We open the Swagger Open API page in the browser and see the exposed methods that correspond to the underlying assets. We return to the IDE and explore the produced code. Here we see that there are two Java projects. One of them, with the suffix SDK, contains the business entities. These are very simple objects that represent the pieces of information handled by the underlying assets. They contain the needed getter methods to access relevant fields. The second project has the suffix microservice. It contains a collection of classes that are controllers, services, and service implementations for each of the exposed methods, with the proper bindings and mappings for input and output parameters. Every service implementation has a line of code that contains the invocation to the corresponding SDK asset. Because it is full code, API developers can add any code desired to implement specific business logic, such as validations, renaming fields, security, logging, and more. Thank you for watching this video. Please contact us with any questions you may have.